everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the Path 11 podcast. I hope you're all having a great day. I'm your host, April Hanna. And on our show today, we're going to be talking about essential oils and aromatherapy. We've invited Andrea Bouget to our show, and she is an internationally recognized aromatherapist and author. Her aromatherapy school, Aromahead Institute, reaches students from around the world thanks to her innovative online educated programs and her inspired approach to a creating community. Andrea was also honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Alliance of International Aromatherapists for the remarkable work she has accomplished in the aromatherapy profession. And Andrea has a new book out. It's called The Heart of Aromatherapy, an easy-to-use guide for essential oils, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So welcome, Andrea. Thanks, April. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. um, I have to say... I have been using essential oils personally for about three and a half years, three and a half, four years. I was introduced to them, and I can't imagine my life without them now. (laughs) (laughs) So I would love to hear how you got into essential oils because it's just opened up a whole new world for me. Um, You know, I've kind of turned into one of those people that says, oh, I have an oil for that. And, you know, (laughs) I'd love love to give all my friends and family and clients um, certain oils to try and things of that sort. So how did you come to learn about essential oils and plants and all of that? Well, I owned a massage school and in upstate New York, and we had um, the students, of course, needed to use oil for massage. So really early on, I started investigating and researching uh, carrier oils and essential oils that the students could be using for each other. I wanted them to have a really great quality oil And that's really how I got into it. And I pretty quickly realized how much I loved the aromas of essential oils. And I, when I was very young, I was in my late twenties, I went to Europe and studied aromatherapy. In in those years, there wasn't any online education about aromatherapy and it was hard to find a school in the United States. So I went to England and I went to France and I studied there and just got so interested and the students at our massage school just loved the aromatherapy portion of the program and this was you know 30 years ago it was way before uh, aromatherapy was popular and so it was very exciting to bring it in to massage in those early years yeah and where was your uh, massage school because i live in upstate new york as well i'm wondering if i ever heard of it it's in ithaca Oh, okay. We were the founders of the Finger Lake School of Massage in Ithaca, New York. Oh, very nice. Ithaca is beautiful. I have some friends that live up there. Mm. Love to hike there. So what brought you to writing this book? This, you know, basically it looks like you're trying to give an a guide for people that's very easy to use. Uh, You have recipes in there, and you chose uh, specifically 40 essential oils to Mm. include in this book. Is that correct? It is. Yeah, and I I decided to write the book mostly because at Aromahead Institute, we get hundreds of questions by email and through social media. Um, you know, every, every couple of days, we've got hundreds and hundreds of questions from people who are just passionate and interested. And, if they, and often people have found the information on the internet to be confusing. There's a lot of different information out there. A lot of it contradicts each other. And if you're just getting started in aromatherapy, or even if you've been using the oils for several years like you, um, you know, if your personal life, your friends, your family, it can really be a challenge to discern the information that's available. So I wanted to write a book that helped people really understand how to use essential oils effectively and safely and with a lot of enjoyment. And I wanted to talk about the oils in a way that people could relate to through stories and through my experiences working with essential oil distillers around the world. And and I wanted a recipe book. I wanted to offer, I, I put over 100 recipes in the book. So people can really use it and create their own personal body care products, their own personal cleaning products, you know, really begin that process of replacing store-bought, chemically-based products with all-natural products just to improve their health. And over the years, I've seen such a big impact of 
how people's health can really change and improve and how vitality can change and improve using all natural plant-based products. So that, that really feeds into the book a lot. And that was a big part of my motivation. And anything specific why you chose the 40 oils to put in the book? Are those ones that you just feel are easy and accessible for people to get um, or are the most uh, beneficial for people to have in their lives? You know, I have to say, it was a little hard to figure out which 40 because there are so many great essential oils. And um, I, what I wanted to do was make it accessible. So if I put 80 or 100 oils in there, I mean, very few people have that many oils in their collection. So I tried to find 40 oils that I felt like really covered the range of all of the wonderful things essential oils can offer us and make sure I included a lot of affordable oils, a lot of oils that are easily available. And so I just went through all the different categories of oils, all the different wonderful health benefits they can offer us and made sure I had at least two or three oils that covered kind of all the everyday stuff. Great. And, you know, for people who are beginners, how can you educate our listeners about the difference or... Let me rephrase the question. Can you, can you educate our listeners about how to choose essential oils? How do they know if they're really legit oils, if they're coming directly from the flowers and the plants, or if they are mixed with something or mixed with perfumes and dyes? How does a beginner know how to choose? I'm really glad you asked that question because obviously you want to be using really high quality oils, and that is really essential if you want to you know, get a... Um, the sort of therapeutic results that we're looking for. And so what I would suggest for a beginner is that they ask a few questions to the company that they work with. <clears throat> so in other words, um, whatever company they're buying their essential oils from, if they can establish that that company is working directly with essential oil distillers to import their oil so that there's a direct relationship between the company selling the oils and the farmers and distillers that are producing them. When you buy from a company that buys directly from those farmers and distillers, you're so much more likely to have great quality oil. And you know, there's no in-between person, there's no distributor in-between. Um, and then another piece is that you wanna just make sure that there's really good quality control um, and so I like personally to buy from companies that are doing a testing procedure that's called GCMS. Are you ready for what that stands for? It's a big long yep. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it stands for gas chromatography mass spectrometry. And so that's why we call it GCMS. And it is a testing procedure that helps identify the components that are in the oil. You know, basically just break down everything that's in it and um, check and make sure that it's the correctly identified plant, uh, genus and species, and just basically make sure that the oil is a pure plant extract. And that testing procedure really helps us know that. And so, the average person buying oils doesn't need to know anything about that testing procedure, but if they know that the company buying the oils is testing the oils to make sure as best they can that they're pure, unadulterated essential oils, then that goes a long way to assuring quality control. So just to summarize, I would say buy from a company that works directly with the distillers and has really good quality control through testing their oil. Okay, great. Very helpful. Um, and I'm not too familiar with, you know, how they actually, when you said to, um, you know, get it from a distiller when they're distilling the oils, how, are you familiar with that process? Like what exactly happens? How do they take the plant or the flower and press it? And how does the oil actually get extracted from that? Yeah, there's a bunch of different extraction processes. The most common ones are um, the plant is either distilled or what we call cold pressed. And it depends on the plant material itself, whether it's going to go through one of those procedures. There's also several other extraction methods 
But in general, most people are going to see that the oils have been distilled. So a large amount of plant material is put into a still. You can think of it kind of like steaming vegetables where there's water in the bottom of the pot and then you put like a little steaming basket in the pot. Well, that's what a still looks like. It's a big vat. It's got water underneath and then it has like a, um, like a steaming um, tray. And this is one method I'm describing. There are multiple methods. And the plant material is put on that tray and then there's heat underneath, just like when you steam broccoli. You put the heat on, it boils the water and it produces steam. And that's what happens in distillation. They, they put the heat on, it warms up the water, it brings it to a boil, it produces steam that then goes through the plant material and breaks open the little specialized um, cells or sacs that hold the essential oil and it releases them. And, there's, and then there's a cooling process. There's a, there's a bit more to it. I'm, I'm explaining it in a very superficial way, but um, just for the people listening to your podcast, I think just if they imagine steaming broccoli and, and just capturing the essential oil, um, not from the broccoli, but from the plant material, for example, lavender, um, capturing the essential oil that gets released through the steam, breaking up open those specialized sacks, for example, that hold the oil. And um, then there's a cooling process and, and the oil gets separated from the water and so, you know, it's, it's uh, a bit technical, honestly. I've seen it hundreds of times and um, visited distillers all over the world and watched them produce the oils, and it's very exciting. And um, the most interesting part is the amount, the huge amount of plant material that it takes to produce the tiniest amount of essential oil. It's very profound when you see that process. It helps you understand how concentrated every single drop of essential oil is and it can also help you understand the price of essential oils and yes the third thing it can help you understand is that you need to use much less essential oil than you might imagine to get the results you're looking for because each drop is so concentrated yeah, I can't remember the actual number, but I remember when somebody was explaining that to get rose oil, mm -hmm. the amount of petals that you, of rose petals that you needed to get like five milliliters was like phenomenal. Was it's like, phenomenal. Oh. I mean, it, it's, you know, it, I've visited rose distillers around the world and generally it takes about 30 to 50 flowers, rose whole rose flowers to produce one drop of rose wow. oil. So if you imagine a dozen roses, multiply that by four dozen roses, four dozen roses to produce one drop of essential oil. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you mentioned that too about the price, because sometimes when I'm speaking to people about essential oils, it's like they want to have them in their lives, but they're like, oh, they're so expensive. But you know, it's, it's also, like you said, understanding and realizing that it is quite a process. And some of the essential oils from what I have learned, too, aren't always accessible because obviously with seasons they're grown. There are certain plants that can only be um, – that, that the distillers can only get from certain parts of the world where, where they grow as well. So, you know, that also can contribute to the price. Absolutely. And it's, it's really, um, it, once you understand that world of distillation and how much plant material it takes and how certain plants, um, you know, for example, most, most plants like lavender, you know, in France, it gets distilled in July and August. And that's it, because it, it, that's when the flowers are in bloom. And so they're distilling the flowers and that's the time of year every year that it happens. So for a lot of plants, there are certain times they're produced every year. Some plants can be distilled all year round because they can be distilled dried. But it does help understand, you know, it does help to explain the price, but then also the concentration. I think it's so easy to think, oh, one little drop, you know, I'll use five or ten instead, you know. And, and in fact, each drop is so concentrated that frequently you can use much less than you imagine and the oil will last much longer to get the results you're looking for. And also, it's a way of respecting the environment and the plants 
We don't need to use more than necessary. So there's many, you know, there's many good reasons, ecological, financial, also, you know, the effect of the oils on your body. There's many good reasons to use less. And in the book, I spend a lot of time helping people understand how much to use specific dilution guidelines and how to use the oils, how to blend with them, which oils to reach for for different issues, how much to use, how often to use them. There's a lot of guidance like that in the book to help people who are just getting started. Yeah, and that is very helpful, helpful, especially with trying to figure out, well, how much do I use? You know, people could put too much in, not enough. Mm-hmm. So it's great that you have that information in there. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific favorite oil or maybe top three that if people were to get started with essential oils that you would say, these are really three that you want to have that you could use for many different things? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely really great, um, very common oils that that are wonderful to get started with. For example, I always love to um, suggest a citrus oil, and um, they're so good for cleaning <clears throat> and diffusing into the air to create a, a lovely aroma in your house and also to help cleanse the air as well. And so um, a lot of times I suggest people get started with essential oils by making your own cleaning products because the advantage to that is that you replace chemical cleaners that are very challenging for your health with all natural cleaning products that are so effective and support your health while you're cleaning and make the house smell great. So a citrus oil like lemon or sweet orange is a wonderful first oil to purchase. And then alongside that, if you're making your own cleaning products, It's really nice to have a pine, spruce, or fir oil um, that are also wonderful for cleaning. So, for example, um, balsam fir is a really nice one. Um, Siberian fir is beautiful. Um, And uh, white pine. There's lots of different beautiful conifer oils, pine, spruce, and fir oils. So, if you were to start with a lemon and balsam fir, Those would both be amazing for cleaning and diffusing and would be great for helping in cold and flu season. If you diffuse both those oils, they can help you breathe more easily, support your immune system. So there's multiple uses. And then um, I also really love um, peppermint as a great oil. There's a little more to be aware of with peppermint. Um, because it, it can be um, very, very strong, and, and I don't like to use it with little kids, but it's a great oil for, um, you know, stomach digestive stuff. It's a great oil for cleaning. It's a very uplifting oil. It's a great oil for muscle aches and pains. So that's a nice one to think about. Um, and then I'll just say also, of course, lavender, because lavender is so safe and gentle on the skin and is so effective for a wide range of health concerns like headaches, muscle aches and pains, uh, things like anxiety, um, sleep. So I guess if I had to choose three out of those, I would say a lemon, a pine, and lavender. And then with a little more education, you could get peppermint and use that as well. Great. And would you be open to maybe sharing one recipe from your book that would be a cleaning recipe that people could use with either the um, pine or the citrus? Um, absolutely. Yeah. There's, you know, I, I love the idea of, um, of cleaning with essential oils because they are amazingly effective. They smell great. They're supportive to your health, and they, and then you can actually replace the cleaning products in your house that can be really disturbing to your health. And um, so, yeah, I feel really great about that. Um, let's see. Well, there's all kinds of different cleaning products. Let's talk about a spray um, because sprays are easy to make. And they're great for cleaning counters, for um, refreshing a bathroom, for cleaning the tub, um, you know, sinks. You can use sprays for all kinds of cleaning. And um, 
And with sprays, you want to make sure that you make them fresh every few weeks because they're made with water and we're not preserving them. So, for example, I have an all-purpose kitchen and bathroom spray in the book, and it's got a conifer in it. It's got hemlock, and it's called Hemlock's I Love to Clean Everything. And it's an uh, on-the-go, all-purpose, amazing cleaning spray. And um, it's just made with eight ounces of water. You buy one of those uh, eight or 16 ounce um, spray bottles, bigger spray bottles, and you just fill it with eight ounces of um, the best water you have around, whether that's distilled or filtered, just a, a, a good quality oil, I mean water. And, um, and then I add a teaspoon of Castile soap, which is a wonderful liquid, all-natural liquid soap. I'll add a teaspoon of soap to the eight ounces of water. And then the recipe calls for 14 drops of hemlock essential oil, eight drops of peppermint essential oil, and 10 drops of tea tree essential oil. And that is just a wonderful cleaning spray for the bathroom, the kitchen, all, all the different surfaces, as long as your counters and surfaces aren't disturbed by essential oils, some materials can be, some counter materials can be, so you want to make sure that that's okay. But otherwise, you know, for tile, for the kitchen sink, for refreshing the air, it's a perfect recipe. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I um, I have a wellness studio, and once a month we do something similar to this. So your book is going to make my life so much easier because <laughs> usually when I'm researching for recipes of things that I want, I'm on Pinterest and I'm looking up, right. you know, different things and trying things out. So you've given me 100 classes that I could do. So I'm really <laughs> excited. But one of the things in one of the um, – cleaners that I had made, I decided to replace uh, with the Swift Jet, you know, the Swiffer mops that you have. Yeah. And when, when you originally buy them, they have like those containers and stuff. And what I did was I, after that, those chemicals were done and finished, I cleaned out the container and then made this uh, essential oil cleaner and put it back in the Swift Jet and used it that way. Nice. Good for you. Yeah. And it, it really makes such a difference and it cleans things so well. Not saying that the over the counter, the stuff, um, you know, it doesn't work, but like you said, there's just so many chemicals that, you know, we're putting on the surfaces of things in our house. So I love using the essential oils for cleaning products. Yeah. And, and when you put those chemicals on the surfaces in your home, you are breathing them in and um, you're ha it has a a significant impact on your respiratory system and on your immune system has to deal with all of those chemicals. And um, I have seen so many examples, thousands literally of examples over the past 20 years of people who have changed their cleaning products from chemicals to all natural essential oil based cleaning products, just using baking soda, vinegar, um, castile soap and essential oils to create their cleaning products, all of which I have a whole section of recipes in, in the heart of aromatherapy in my book. And then they start to see changes, even changes in kids with asthma, with learning disabilities, with ongoing respiratory issues, with anxiety, with skin issues. So many things can begin to change when you reduce the amount of chemicals you're exposed to in your home and replace with health supporting natural products. It is, I can't emphasize it enough. If I was going to say, do one thing in your life to change your health or the health of the kids that are living in your home with your family, it would be to change the cleaning products and reduce the amount of chemicals that you're exposing yourself and your kids to. It's huge. Yeah. And once you see recipes like yours and see how easy they are to make, I believe that they're even more cost effective oh, and uh, yeah and and like you said I mean you're talking about some of the castile soap water and the essential oils boom and you're done you know right and a little baking soda and vinegar vinegar and you've got it yeah you've got all your ingredients and it, it's so they're easy to make and they're once you've made them a few times you can make them in just a couple minutes you can change the essential oils so that depending on the season and 
depending on what you're in the mood for. You know, every few weeks I make my cleaning products fresh and I add whatever essential oils I'm in the mood for. And I use different ones in the summer and the winter. And, and then, um, gosh, in terms of cost effective, you might think initially that you're spending a little more, which initially you are because you're buying your first bottles of essential oil. So you might spend a little bit more. But once you have those oils, you, you have at least a year ahead, you know, depending on the shelf life of the individual oils, of being able to use them over and over and over again. And there's so, you know, so many drops in those little bottles, you'd be amazed. And you only need a few in your products. So eventually it ends up becoming very cost effective and certainly a huge impact on your health. Yeah, and speaking about the chemicals too, I found that, you know, over the years, the more that I use the essential oils, I am so much more sensitive to smells of lotions and perfumes. And, you know, I used to be one of those Bath and Body Works, not saying that there's anything wrong with Bath and Body Works, but, you know, they have like such beautiful fragrant lotions. And it's so hard for me now to even use those, especially when I have found other recipes to use coconut oil and then adding, um, you know, different types of oils for hand lotion. And it feels better and it smells better. And I know that I'm actually getting the benefits of the plant or the flower into my skin as opposed to some of the other chemicals that are mixed in with regular hand lotion. So. Right. That's exactly it. I love the way you just said that. And it's true. We become accustomed to the smells of different um, artificial fragrances and perfumes. And um, we maybe think of certain chemicals as smelling clean or fresh because that's what we've been exposed to. Um, and it's easy to to not really think about the impact on your health, but um, it is it is very significant. And so uh, there's all these benefits to changing that um, but with your health, with um, you know your energy, because your body has to do a lot of work to get rid of those chemicals. It has a it has a uh, challenging to your immune system, to your vitality. And so those small changes can have such a wonderful, significant effect. And then over time your nose becomes educated to what actually is natural from nature and what's synthetic, like you were just sharing. And the things that are synthetic become less and less appealing. Yes, yes, so true. <laughs> yeah, um, good thing. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about Aroma Head Institute. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, yes, absolutely. I started Aroma Head Institute um, a long time ago, really in the late 90s. And um, originally, I started just teaching, you know, uh, in-person classes, teaching through the massage school, and it just grew. People really wanted to learn, and I had people contacting me, honestly, from all over the world. Um, and I decided uh, in the early 2000s to put a Romad Institute online. And as soon as we did that. Um, we suddenly had the ability to uh, help educate people from all over the world with about essential oils because we created online classes. And so um, we are, it is a premier institute now. We have students from over 43 countries from around the world, and um, we have a whole team of uh, teachers and instructors, and um, Aroma Head Institute offers classes online, multimedia. We have videos and webinars, and um, beautiful, a beautiful online classroom, and um, it's really pretty exceptional. We built it all from scratch, so it is just absolutely beautiful and user friendly. And we offer classes at all levels. We offer classes to people who want to learn about oils just for themselves and their friends and families and to just change their lifestyle and live a more healthy lifestyle and improve their health. And we offer classes for people who want to become aromatherapists, certified aromatherapists and professionals and use essential oils professionally in their work, want to really study them in depth. So we provide a range of classes in, in between all of that. And um, it's very exciting, and all of us on the team, there's 14 of us that work at Aroma Head, and all of us are um, you know, dedicated to creating excellent online education and 
we get to know every student and we, we really have a very personal school and it's very exciting. Yeah, and I'm seeing online that the aromatherapy certification program, it's 235, it's a 235-hour program. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a significant program for anyone who's serious about wanting to um, really study the oils. We have people that take it simply for personal use because they want to study in depth, and we have people who take it because they want to use the oils professionally. And we really teach, we go in so much more depth um, than, you know, uh, you could get from reading a book or from, you know, taking some basic classes. It's, it's really quite a remarkable program. And with the online program, is it something where with an online class that you have to be signed on at a certain time, on a certain date, or is it a curriculum that people can take at their own pace? Yeah, we, we definitely do it at your own pace. So you never have to be on at any particular time because, because we have students from 43 different countries. Everybody's in different time zones. And so everything is there and available and accessible. You have 24-7 access to your classes. And you can log on anytime you feel like studying. And we've organized it so that you can log on and study for 15 or 20 minutes, or you could study for hours. It's it's organized step by step in, in the direction so that uh, if you have a really busy life and you can only do a little bit at a time, it's set up for you to do that and keep really good track of where you are in the course. Or if you just want to immerse, you can do that as well. And um, we have this class called Aromatherapy for Natural Living. And that's the class, that's our most popular class. And that's the class that is um, just perfect for people who just want to really learn how to make blends and use essential oils for themselves and their friends and families. Incredible amount of um, <clears throat> guidance and um, recipes and videos. I, I have put a lot of videos and webinars into that course so you can watch me in the kitchen blending and blend along with me and, and then be on these wonderful webinars. And again, all at your own pace. Yeah, and you have quite a YouTube channel as well. <laughs> I do, and as a matter of fact, that's a great place to get started if you're you know, trying to decide if you want to take an online class. Going to the Aromahead Institute's YouTube channel is a great way to see me, understand how I teach, learn how to make some basic blends, and then the course material goes much further than the YouTube channel. But the YouTube channel is a great place to get started. Yeah, great. And I mean, you guys have it all here. <laughs> you also have come up with an app, yep. I see. So yep. it looks like that you can download that uh, through if you have an iPhone or an Android as well. And you have 72 recipes on there. Yep, the app is really fun. And we have, we're, we have a strong presence on social media. We have a big Facebook page and a really dynamic Pinterest page. And um, we even use, you know, Google Plus, and we um, post on Instagram every day, and we have a really active, I write a blog post every single week. We have wonderful emails that we send out with recipes every week, so if you go to Aromahead Institute and just sign up for our email list, then you get hooked into everything, <clears throat> and that's what I would recommend, is to get onto our email list so that you know when we're doing free webinars and you get a weekly recipe and you know we just we love to engage with our audience and really make sure people can contact us through social media through email through video webinars all of it great and i'm a little biased and this is only from my own opinion but you know since using essential oils I am an energy worker as well, so mm -hmm. not a massage therapist, but do energy balancing and Reiki and things of that sort. And I have found that the oils enhance the energy sessions for my clients. I almost feel like I have a helper there with me, yeah. you know, out, outside of any spirit guides or things, you know, that are showing up in the room. It just feels like that, well, I know that the oils just add an extra you know, hertz of energy or a certain vibration, and it relaxes my clients so much more. I feel like it helps them to go even deeper into their own, you know, meditation and healing, and it has just been 
amazing for the for my own personal practice. So I would recommend if anybody is doing body work, like you said, as a massage therapist, or if you're you know touching people and doing energetic work, that the oils. I would say and vote for that they can only enhance and help the session for the client. Yeah, I love to hear that you're doing that. That's so wonderful. We actually, because of my background as a massage therapist and owning a massage school, I created an entire course just for body workers. And it's uh, aroma, aromatherapy for massage therapists, although it's appropriate for any kind of body work or energy work at all. Okay. Any hands-on or even hands-off work, um, we have a whole course just based on that. And I do, I do absolutely agree with you. I mean, the plants are a living, vital, um, you know, part of nature, and um, and the the essential oils that we extract from the plants are very vital. And and we have, and there's an amazing impact uh, of smell of the whole olfactory system and how that affects our emotional state of being. And so. Using essential oils for, you know, for their energetic properties and for their vitality is extraordinary. And that's a whole body of work in and of itself. And we all know that just from, you know, associating certain aromas um, with certain experiences, smelling something that brings you back to a memory from childhood or just, you know, having certain aromas that make you feel so good and there's a whole science behind that as well as just the whole intuitive relationship with these beautiful vital oils yes and i know that a lot of our listeners are very much into meditation they love to do out of body and astral projection um is there any oil that you would recommend that could help either for dreaming or Mm -hmm. meditation Definitely. I mean, I, my first go-to with that would be frankincense. Mm-hmm. You know, it is just, it's such a beautiful oil to help deepen your breath, deepen your meditation, um, you know, create such a uh, incredibly nourishing environment. So if you were meditating or doing any of that work and you have a diffuser, you could put a few drops of frankincense in the diffuser and diffuse it into the air and that would be amazing. Great. And every time you say something, it leads me to another question. (laughs) Um, And yeah, can we talk about diffusing? Because I have heard a couple of things where it's better to diffuse oils where there's a mist and water as opposed to actually heating them up because that can change the property of the oil. And there are some diffusers that you can put a couple of drops on a pad and then you plug it in and it's heating it and you know, it can smell the room up, but what's your take on diffusing oils? Personally, I love using electric diffusers, um, or nebulizers, you know, where you plug it in, you put water in them and, you know, you put some drops of essential oil in the water and, and then it steams out. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of diffusers and honestly, it's personal preference. Um, a candle diffuser, I think of more as just creating a bit of an ambiance, uh, like a lovely little aroma in the room. You might put a candle diffuser on for an hour or so, but really um, creates just this, this sweet aroma in the room of whatever oil you're using. But yes, heat does change the, um, change the oils. And I do personally prefer to use an electric diffuser that doesn't heat the oils at all. It just um, diffuses them out into a steam of water, uses a fan instead of heat. Um, that is my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with any of them, um, but it, I do like those diffusers. And, and then usually when I diffuse, I'll put a few drops in the diffuser. And diffusing, <clears throat> it really just depends on how much space you have in the house, if the windows are open or shut, if there's little animals in the house that can't go out or leave the room or if there's little babies in in the space you know there's all those different considerations when you diffuse so if you're in a small space like say an apartment in a city and you have cats or little dogs or babies in the space and nobody can get away from the aroma then I would diffuse very very little I might, you know, not either not diffuse at all or just diffuse a drop or two for maybe 10 or 15 minutes maximum because the little animals can't let you know if the aroma is disturbing them and they have such a strong sense of smell. But in the other genre where if you are, are living in a house and 
the animals are, can leave the room or go outside or let's say it's summer and the windows are open, then you, know, you can just use more. And I might use five or 10 drops depending on the oils in the diffuser and run it for you know, an hour. Uh, it's, it's, there's, no, there's no right or wrong here. It's just sort of um, sometimes I put the diffuser on when I leave the house and let it run for several hours if there's, <clears throat> again, no animals in the house that can't get away from it. So there's a variety of things to consider, but I love diffusing and I think it's an incredible way to um, cleanse the air, to um, create a beautiful, you know, aromatic environment and, um, you know, really set the stage for the uh, feeling you want to have in the house too. Great. And how about essential oils and animals? Yeah, just what I was saying, you know, um, there, what I would do if you're just a beginner and you're not um, trained in using oils with animals is um, personally the aroma head approach that we take, and again, there's no right and wrong here, but the aroma head approach is that I never use essential oils on small animals. Um, at all on their fur or their skin because it can be very toxic and they're very, very strong and the animals are very little compared to us. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, you can, um, I would be very cautious about uh, ever using oils on animals. That being said, I have two cats. I diffuse in my house. I clean with oils, but the cats can leave the rooms where the oils are. They can go in and outside and, um, you know, they can move away from the oils if the aroma is disturbing them and they can move towards them if they like the aroma. And that's great. I don't hesitate to use oils on my body or for cleaning or diffusing um, with cats in the house, but the cats can go in and out. So that's the variable that really matters. And then there are, I'll just mention that there are lots of wonderful healing. There's a lot of potential for healing with oils with large animals like there are people that work with horses and large animals to and use essential oils and it's brilliant but it's a training it's it's not the same as using oils on people and so i always recommend if you want to use oils with animals to go get trained in exactly that well, thank you so much. This has been such a fun podcast for me. <laughs> it flew by. Um, yeah, and you provided great information. And can you let people know where they can find the Aroma Head Institute online if they're interested in taking a course there or a training or want to absolutely. check out some of the free trainings that you have? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you just go to um, the, the address is www.aromahead.com. It's A-R-O-M-A for aroma, H-E-A-D for head. It's all one word, aromahead.com. And from there, you can, you know, contact us, get onto our email list, um, find links to all of our social media, and uh, sign up for, we have a free introductory class that helps people see our online platform and really get started working with us and get a feel for if they want to go ahead and take another course. Well, thank you so much, Andrea, and I'm sure everybody listening really enjoyed this podcast. And for you beginners out there, I would definitely recommend checking out her book and also the website, and she's got some great free trainings on there for you as well. And again, the book is The Heart of Aromatherapy, an easy-to-use guide for essential oils. Thanks Thanks again. Thank you. Take care. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. If you'd like more information about our films or to purchase our DVDs, you can head on over to our website at thepastseries.com. They're also available to purchase on amazon.com. Our films are also streaming online at vimeo.com, guyamtv.com, and iTunes. If you have a show suggestion or would like us to interview someone specifically, please feel free to shoot us an email at info at thepastseries.com or send us a tweet at thepastseries. Please rate and review us in iTunes and subscribe. We hope you enjoyed the show.